Hello, retro fans. It has been quite a long break, well, since the last video, and um, well, I feel indeed a bit sorry about this, but um, there have been well a couple of things in <laughs> in my life that uh, kind of prevented to well create a new episode in a shorter time frame so to say and uh, basically I have been busy with a lot of um, different stuff not really retro related and uh, therefore I was, wasn't was really able to work on content and uh, I have recognized that especially um, the last episodes were um, lacking more well, kind of passion and kind of um, depth and quality and uh, I decided uh, before I rush through another episode I will take some time off think about the content think about the whole let's say project the channel itself and all that stuff and uh, I will uh, continue creating content as soon as I feel more comfortable doing so and um well the main reasons are um i well started a new job a couple of months ago and um it is um still and it will remain like this uh pretty uh, demanding so um and uh especially in august i was uh, commuting to work uh, using my bike Maybe you have seen this on, on Twitter. I have posted two time-lapse videos of my bike trip to work. And um, this has eaten up a lot of time as well. And then I attended um, at two bike, mountain bike marathons. And um, this requires a lot of uh, preparation as well, a lot of training. And uh, I have a couple of uh, additional races now in October and November, so um, things will well remain a bit busy over the next weeks. But I, I think I expect that uh, over the winter time, everything calms down a little bit, and uh, all those uh, let's say race slash event activities are well not as frequent as we have it now in autumn or fall whatever we want to call it and uh well yeah actually i'm coming back to this how i work series and uh i'm, I'm very keen and i'm very interested in to uh, finish the series as well so that um we can kind of round up the whole thing and that uh we will have some final let's say question and answer episode uh, where we hopefully going to pick the winners of the giveaway uh, activities so this is um, still valid so i'm not going to sneak away with the stuff and um, <laughs> i have uh, seen a lot of uh, participation so i'm creating a list of um, the participants and then i have to come up with a creative way of uh, picking the winner Windows and uh, hopefully it will be as random and as fair as possible and um, yeah and beside this I have received some some new stuff as well some new hardware some new um, components for new projects as well and I'm really looking forward to uh, work on new mods and new repairs all that things to test new things and uh, um, I have kind of decided to change my concept of working on projects since um, I was constantly running out of the schedule so I did a lot of promises to people and people were waiting for the stuff and I wasn't able to finish this in time and uh, especially uh, my friend Marco in Italy um, kind of pushed me to the decision to change this whole thing and uh, he's absolutely right and uh, he was waiting for his stuff uh, for a long time, too long actually and um, I decided to kind of, well, let's say 
reduce the projects I'm doing for others. So I have a couple of things in my uh, shelf to do still and um, I will change the whole concept so I will let's say get some ideas from people what they are looking for and then I will work on the projects and uh, as soon as they are finished then um, we get in contact whether they are still interested in or something like this but it's not that I am going to do this on kind of an order base uh, anymore since um, my life is actually so filled with stuff that um, I can't really prioritize this kind of work and therefore it will be uh, very unpredictable and uh, I felt a lot of uh, pressure, a lot of stress with all that stuff, with all those uh, responsibilities and uh, this has rendered this whole, let's say, hobby to some kind of uh, mm, unpleasant experience and uh, this is what I really want to change since uh, I really like to work on this retro things and uh, I have a couple of uh, new projects in mind and all that things and uh, I want to work on this stuff more on a well let's say relaxed and enjoyable base and uh, well we will see how this is going to work anyway so now we are actually uh, at part five of my how I work series I was indeed a little bit surprised and uh, I have to admit I had to watch my previous video just to get some kind of uh, idea what I have covered already and uh, what I have promised to cover in the next episodes and um, hopefully I will get through this as best as possible and uh, let's uh, see how this is going to work and in this episode I'm going to talk about OBS as a recording slash streaming software completely. So, and in order to do so, I will quickly jump back to the presentation I have used in the previous episodes and uh, I have extended this a little bit with um, a couple of, uh, of uh, just a few new pages just to provide some kind of framework some context to what I'm talking about in this episode so that you get a better understanding what's uh, the whole idea so to say and um, I have prepared this probably on this view and uh, yeah it is working fortunately and I just have to pick to the right page and if you just go back quite quickly I have introduced how my video setup is working so as you can see I'm using two cameras I'm using the frame meister as main capture device I have an additional input for the Ultimate 64 and for my oscilloscope and uh, in addition to this I have a separate audio setup as well so I got my microphone I got uh, a mixer device in between to combine um, different audio sources feed this into my system using a 2x2 USB audio interface and then I have additional audio sources coming over HDMI from the Ultimate 64 for example. I'm using FUBAR as a player for background music and uh, the FrameMeister is able to output uh, audio over the HDMI device as well. So it depends on what I'm actually doing, whether I'm working with mono or stereo signals on the C64. I may or may not have to mix them in a certain way and uh, especially when I'm using uh, let's say two FPGA sets for example or two um, I forgot the name uh, arm sets, arm two sets 
and I have uh, more than two channels, for example, then I may have to distribute them uh, in well, the stereo spectrum, so to say. And then I'm routing the audio over the XR18. And if it's just a standard mono signal, for example, for gaming or something like this, then I'm going over the HDMI. And to have some flexibility, I have created a setup like this. And um, this is pretty confusing at the very beginning. And therefore, I have decided to start with a very basic setup just to explain how I feed this into my system and how I handle this in OBS. So, and um, perhaps as a short, let's say, explanation or yeah, talk about the reason why I'm using OBS. Um, the main thing is that uh, I have tested a lot of different video recording slash streaming software systems, packages, whatever you want to call this. And uh, I think what's a very um, well known is um, XSplit, for example. I have used XSplit in the past as well. But um, I had a couple of issues, especially syncing different uh, video sources with different frame rates. So uh, I had a lot of stuttering recording C64 outputs over HDMI and other things. And um, I wasn't really happy about the, the handling, the, the, the look and feel of the software and uh, especially the, let's say, the price model. I mean, for XSplit you have to pay and um, therefore you really have to come up with something which feels very comfortable for you. And uh, so I decided to um, start working with OBS and OBS is for free, and that's very nice. But I support the project over Patreon, and uh, if you want to do so, if you want to use OBS, and if you want to support the development of OBS, then uh, you feel, feel free to do so as well. And uh, it's a very interesting project. It's making a lot of progress, and uh, therefore I'm very confident that this is really the way to go. And uh, what I really like about OBS is that um, the concept is perhaps a little bit confusing at the very beginning, but if you spend some time, if you just dig into, let's say, the structure, the philosophy of the program, then I think it is um, pretty easy to set up your scenes and uh, to do all this recording and live streaming and all that stuff. And... Um, this is basically what we're going to talk about today and uh, as a main setup, a basic setup, I have decided that we're going to need uh, the microphone and I'm going to use this USB microphone I'm using here right now and we're going to have a face cam, that's the one we are looking here right now and um, we're going to implement the desk cam, the one you may know from my previous videos and uh, as an additional source I have decided to include the Frame Meister or the RetroTing 2X that's a part which I have just added to the slide as well the representation of how to capture external video slash audio content like um, your game console, your computer, whatever you want to capture. And um, this brings us to uh, the main thing, uh, what we have to keep in mind about OBS. And this is the difference between inputs, sources and scenes. And this is very important because if you if you keep mixing this, uh, stuff up and if you keep changing your scenes and changing your inputs and sources, then you will end up uh, with a set of uh, scenes which isn't perhaps working the way you expect this. And uh, the reason is pretty simple because some changes are affecting... Oops, I'm sorry. Just have to mute my watch. <laughs> okay, um, because um, this is affecting the scenes, some of the modifications are affecting scenes 
And uh, if you switch to another scene and you find yourself surprised that um, the look and feel is very different, then the main reason is that you have changed something that is affecting multiple scenes, for example. And uh, in order to well, sheet some light on this topic, um, I have decided to, well, add some explanations to this. And the very first thing what we can see is inputs. And inputs is everything you feed into your system. So hardware-wise as well as software-wise. So the main thing what I have talked about is the microphone, whether it's a um, USB microphone or whether it's an XLR microphone and an USB interface, for example, or if you have just a simple, let's say, a microphone with an uh, with an, a mono uh, jack or stereo jack, and you connect this to your sound card, for example, this is what I mean with microphone. Then we may have HDMI cams or USB cams, for example, and uh, this is going to provide some video signals. If you use an USB cam, you may have the audio over the USB cam as well. So this is one way to work with video audio inputs, for example. Then we have an additional HDMI capture. This is what I have mentioned already with capturing the content from a C64 game console, whatever, everything that feeds into your system via HDMI. Then uh, we may have a music player playing some background music and uh, this is uh, probably something that runs on your system and you want to capture the audio from this uh, music player. And perhaps we have some additional software like uh, what I'm using here right now to present this presentation. Or perhaps you have some chat software or a gaming software on your system you want to capture. So all those things are inputs. And um, just to mention one thing, in addition, you can feed into the system uh, pre-recorded videos, for example, video clips or something like this. And um, this is handled as an input as well. So like uh, my, um, my, my intro, for example, is a, is a pre-rendered, pre-created video, which I just uh, feed into OBS as an input. And uh, basically there are many possibilities. And um, the way OBS is handling inputs is um, by sources. And the source is some kind of, uh, let's say, kind of a container, kind of a package of an input. Because um, sources are using inputs, so uh, a source is just some kind of a, well, let's say, an enhanced version of an input. And um, sources is actually basically the component of your scenes, or components if you have multiple sources, which is quite often the case, I guess. And um, the source provides various configuration of inputs. So I will going to show you this uh, in, a, in a few minutes, what I'm talking about here. But just for, let's say, basic understanding, if you have a video source, for example, and the video source is coming with a certain format, maybe it's full HD, for example, 1080p, and uh, you want to kind of change uh, the resolution or change the size of your video input, for example, like I have done for my uh, face cam, what we can see on the corner here. And um, the camera is providing a full HD video signal, but in this scene we do not need the full resolution. So by using a source we have the, cha uh, the chance to modify the input in a way that uh, we do not feed the, the whole resolution into the system. This is perhaps not really required for HD inputs, for example, but if you work uh, with 4K cameras, for example, and you want to use multiple sources, then you will experience that this creates a lot of stress for your system. And especially if you scale down the video signal, then uh, you may change the input in a way that you uh, use a different resolution of the signal 
just to reduce the load of your system, for example. And this is done by sources. And this is this is very important because if you're going to change the source, you have to keep in mind that this may affect multiple scenes. So, and basically there are uh, two ways of changing the content of your sources. And uh, as a rule of thumb, I keep in mind that as soon as I right click on the source and change some parameters there, then this is very likely to affect multiple scenes. And as long as I keep the source as it is, but move it around in my scene, scale it in my scene, all that stuff, then this is not going to affect multiple scenes. And this, this is indeed very important because if you have created a whole set of scenes, and this is what I'm going to show you in a minute, and you change your source or your input, then you will end up uh, with a mess of your scenes. So you switch to a different scene and you just recognize the scaling of your input is wrong or you have added some filters, some cropping or some, some mask or something like this. And um, this is really changing a whole set of scenes later on. And um, one, one big example or one, let's say, very significant example is the frames I'm using on my screen. What you can see here right now, this main view, auxiliary view, and this bluish kind of uh, borders I have created just to keep the content together. Um, this is basically a source. Uh, the source is a picture. And um, if I switch to a scene and just recognize that uh, the frame isn't matching, and I go to the source and change the picture as the input for the source, then every single scene using the same source will see the change of this uh, modification or it will see the effect of this modification. So if I am going to use different frames for different scenes, then I have to create different sources. And this is very, very important. And as if, if, if you are new to OBS, for example, you may trap into this pitfall every now and then. But uh, if you keep this in mind, then life becomes much more easier. And uh, what I have mentioned perhaps already is that scenes are using sources. So it's always the way that you have to create a source using an input, and then you can add this to your scene. You cannot add inputs directly to scenes. So you really have to use this source. And uh, scenes are created in a layered way. So you can add multiple sources to a scene, you can stack them on each other and uh, you really have to keep this in mind that the order of those layers is affecting the output or let's say the, the look and feel of your scene. We will see this in a minute. And um, what we can have as well is various configuration of sources. So what I have mentioned already, if we add a source to a scene and then we modify the source in a way that uh, we do not really change the source itself. We just change, let's say, the size and the location of the source. Then uh, we have the chance to create a unique, a unique scene uh, without affecting the source. And the interesting thing is that. If we want to use the very same input, for example, like my face cam, and um, we want to have this in a standard full HD format or in a cropped format, as we can see it right now, since this is not full HD, it's a little bit reduced on the sides, then um, we create basically two sources, two different sources, using the very same input but we add some modifiers or filters or transitions or transformations and all that stuff. And um, this, this, is, this is indeed very important if you work with the very same input, but want to have it in different, let's say, formats, different flavors, different color corrections, different effects, something like this. And um, well, jumping a bit forward, 
let's talk about this layer concept and uh, I have added in the corner that we are using different sources the video desk cam, the face cam, video computer, the audio microphone and a picture which is basically the frame and uh, what you can see is that the main content is on the bottom of the screen basically this uh, kind of bluish filled a rectangle and um, this could be either uh, perhaps the desk cam or your computer for example your console or whatever and then you add on top of this for example the face cam and this face cam is kind of uh, covering a certain area of your main content so you have to keep this in mind and if you mix up the order, if you put the main content on top of the face cam, you won't see the face cam, obviously. So you really have to maintain a certain order. And if you add the frame um, to your whole scene and the frame is not on top of everything, then perhaps the frame is covered by uh, the content you have added previously. And uh, you can simply change this uh, by drag and drop. So you can change the layer structure in or to the order you want to have it. And um, this is indeed very important if you especially work with uh, sources which are available but hidden, for example. So you can enable and disable um, sources, for example. And this is one way to prevent um, having many scenes for example so you may have one scene with all your content and you just uh, change the visibility of this of the sources or you create multiple scenes with exactly the configuration you are looking for basically i'm going for the second concept so i have really i have dedicated scenes and i usually try to avoid hide and show sources for example and um, there is no rule without exception so to say especially for this episode i have created a scene where i am using this um, enable disable feature because this makes it a little bit easier to work with the content and um, this is what we are going to do right now i'm going to hide the window capture I'm, have, I'm using for this presentation so that we can jump into basically the view I want to use for explaining this whole topic even further. So, and now I have disabled this window capture 3 which is basically the presentation and now we can see my sources and we can see my scenes. So if I move the mouse into the right position, we can see what I'm talking about. So, and uh, to make life a little bit easier, I have colored the sources so that we can uh, easily track them. And um, I have created a standard scene, which I have called window, because I'm using this to capture window contact content basically most of the time and um, what I have mentioned already is that we are going to have a frame and we're going to have a microphone we're going to have a camera and we're going to have some additional content and this is actually a display capture and I have capture I'm, I'm capturing the lower corner of OBS just to avoid this uh, mirroring effect so that we do not capture what we have captured what we have captured and so on. I did some cropping to the source and um, this is a very good example if we just jump into the right click menu or the secondary function menu whatever we want to call it and we go to transform for example and we say edit transform and i move this into an area where we can see what i'm talking about uh, we can see that i have cropped the input at this position just to fit this to my screen and to avoid this well mirroring effect 
And uh, this is a very good example. If I'm going to use this source, call it display capture, in another scene, for example, and I'm going to change some parameters here in this scene item transform window, then all scenes using this source will see the effect of the change. So this is very important to keep this in mind. And this is the very same for um, filters, for example, as we can find them here. So actually I'm not using any filters for this scene, but uh, for this source, I'm sorry, but we are going to see what I'm talking about in a minute. But if we just uh, click on this and move this around, now we can see this, this mirroring effect I have talked about, then we are not affecting the source itself. We just affect the represent, representation of the source. And if we're going to change the scaling, for example, or the position of the source, whatever uh, we can do by drag and drop, for example, this is not going to affect other scenes. So this is very, very important to keep this in mind. And uh, talking about the combination of sources, as you can see, I have uh, added two display captures, for example. So the input is going to be a display capture. It's going to be the very same input I have used for display capture and display capture 2. But I have created two sources in order to modify this input capture. And um, I'm going to enable this. We can see that... Uh, Something new has kind of uh, popped up and this is going to be the top part of OBS. And if we go back to Display Capture 2 and check the transform function, for example, we can see that I have added different crop coordinates for this source. We still talk about the very same input. Input is Display Capture but we have two sources with different parameters and therefore different representation of the input. And this is really one of the main principles, the main concept of OBS. And this is really important that you get familiar with this thing because if you haven't really, let's say, learned this to an extent that you can do this uh, with closed eyes, whatever you want to call this, then you may stumble over this every now and then, and you may wonder why have this scene has, well, got some changes, for example, or why is this scene looking different than uh, compared to the days before, something like this. Uh, I haven't changed anything at the scene at all, but you may have modified your source and therefore you will see something else. And um, another recommendation is that uh, you either use, for example, this coloring, which is available in OBS now, and uh, I am trying to kind of transform all my scenes to the same coloring. Unfortunately, if you click on uh, this item and say set color, then this is not going to uh, affect all your scenes. So this coloring is scene-based, not source-based. Mm, it's perhaps not really uh, very consistent. I would expect if I change something in the source section, then this is going to affect all the sources. But in this special case, it is scene-based and therefore you have to do this by scene. But um, this provides uh, a good chance that if we click on a different scene, for example, let's go for uh, camera 2, which is basically my base cam, now in full screen. And um, unfortunately, we have to go back because we can't see the coloring because OBS is changing to switching to the new scene immediately when I'm not in studio mode and I'm not in studio mode because I'm using the Elgato Stream Deck 
and this is not really working very well in studio mode because it keeps switching the scenes and we do not have the preview of the scene but um, that's a whole different topic and we want to keep things simple anyway uh, what i was going to say is that in all of my scenes i'm trying to stick to the very same color scheme so if i work on a scene if i switch to a scene i can spot immediately what type of camera source is included in the scene and uh, what type of uh, other sources i'm using there and uh, this is indeed very comfortable and uh, the next thing i have started to kind of uh, let's say standardize is that the naming of the scene is kind of representing what this scene is all about so this sounds a bit silly perhaps a little bit simple but uh, you may recognize when you work with obs and you create your scenes and you have a lot of ideas and you keep changing your concept and all that stuff then you may end up with a mess of scenes a mess of different names and it is really important to know that the names you are using for sources and scenes are kind of um, let's say on the same list or something like this so if you have a source call it cam2 and if you're going to create a scene call it cam2 this is not going to work and that's the reason why i have cam uh, space 2 uh, here in, in my name and uh, as you can see i'm not very consistent with all of my names but i may have to change this Fortunately, if I'm going to change this, I have to change my Elgato Stream Deck configuration as well. So, a lot of things that, well, just happened during the, let's say, development of this whole well, channel concept. But uh, if you start from the very beginning, then you have the chance to do it right at the first time. So, you really have to come up with an idea how to call your scenes. In order to find your scenes quite quickly to understand what the scene is all about to avoid that the scene name is using a source name which is already existing for example and so on and the same uh, for sources so you may have to come up with a kind of a, a scheme or some kind of well idea how to call your sources in order to avoid that you are um, using the very same name as you may have used in your scenes and that you really know what you are talking about so at the very beginning for example i was calling um, the hdmi input coming from the frame meister i was calling this uh, c64 but later on i recognized well i'm not using the c64 all of the time sometimes i'm using a console or something like this or different input or well, turbo chameleon for example and uh, therefore i started now to call uh, this input frame meister and um, if you can see i have kind of an extensive list of uh, scenes already and if you keep uh, changing your source names for example then uh, this becomes a little bit confusing over the scenes so this is really something you may have to think about at the very beginning and then you may have to write down kind of a structure or something like this and uh, you really will benefit from this approach later on so uh, basically so much about sources scenes and well inputs perhaps not in this order and uh, there's a very interesting thing as um, we can see here right now we can add, we can remove scenes, uh, sources, whatever. Uh, we can change uh, sources, we can change the order of sources as well as of scenes. So this is just for the purpose of um, keeping them organized, so to say. And here, this uh, up and down button are for uh, the layer structure, what I have mentioned just a couple of minutes ago. And... Um, one interesting thing is that if you record videos or stream on a regular basis and you're going to, let's say, 
make some changes to your setup just because you want to try something new something like this then what i really recommend is that you create another set of scenes so that you have your let's say old set of scenes as kind of a backup and then you can uh, work on a new set of scenes and if you just uh, kind of messed things up or just in a hurry and you have to go live and uh, you're still not happy with the changes you have added to OBS then you have the chance to quickly go back to your old scene collection and then you hopefully have the very same setup you have used in the past and uh, we can see this here under uh, the menu scene collection we can say a new scene we can duplicate the scene rename remove import export this is very important if you uh, move OBS to different system but you want to keep your scenes then you are able to export the scenes and import the scenes on your new system for example you do not have to start from scratch and uh, what I have mentioned is that if we want to work on this set of scenes for example and but we want to keep this let's say untouched something like this then you can go and say duplicate and then we can add a new name for this let's call it test scenes well it's not so hard to write but i found almost every single version to make it wrong and as you can see obs jumps to this um, new set of scenes and everything we're going to change here right now is not going to affect this ultimate 64 set of scenes i have used before and this is indeed very very important that you always have some kind of fallback strategy because uh, sometimes if you're really in a hurry if it's uh, really something you need to get done or something like this perhaps you are on twitch you have a kind of schedule people are waiting for you to stream and you have messed up your set of scenes then you're really really uh, in, in bad trouble and therefore it is very comfortable to create different set of scenes and uh, as you can see i have used this in the past quite extensively to create different sets of scenes for different purposes and the main reason is that in your scenes what i have talked about a couple of minutes ago the scaling of your sources for example is uh, well saved basically so it's stored there and uh, if you use different um, devices providing input to your system but the input in OBS is going to be the very same like for example the frame meister or an HDMI capture device good example is uh, the Ultimate 64 and the Neo Geo for example or a C64 connected over uh, the RetroTing 2X all those three devices or let's add the frame meister to this list as well so all those four devices they have they are using a different resolution for the hdmi output and therefore you have to use a different scaling in your scene of the source using the input i was talking about still confusing but well i think you get it and to avoid that you change your scenes all the time you're changing your device it makes some sense to create different scenes and then you set all those sources and scenes in order to work with this certain device you are going to use and you, then you just have to switch between the scenes and then you have everything set in your streaming for example in your recording um, there's basically one thing that's a little bit uncomfortable if you keep changing your scenes for example your scene collection basically and then you switch to another scene collection all those changes well obviously are not transferred to the other scene collection so if you have changed the structure of your scenes for example if you are using different sources something like this then uh, you may have to move this to your other setup and this 
makes it a little bit, let's say, cumbersome over the time if you keep changing your whole OBS setup. So one recommendation is basically that you come up with uh, some set of scenes, which is your, let's say, your workhorse. That's your main setup, for example. And if you if you if you like the set of scenes, if you get familiar with it, if it's if it feels comfortable to work with, then create duplicates of this uh, scene collection and then uh, add the changes you are looking for for perhaps the different devices and all that stuff. This makes life a lot whole easier than um, if you just jump into the water and create a lot of scenes, a lot of scene collections for different devices, and then you're going to fine tune one set of scenes and then you want to apply those changes to the other scenes or other scene collections. So um, it sounds quite confusing, I know, but... Uh, with some practice and uh, if you if you take the time to go through the steps and if you really start to understand how OBS is working, you may come up to the point that you really feel very comfortable working with OBS. Then you really appreciate that um, the main concept is indeed quite simple. I mean, OBS is a very powerful tool. You have a, have a lot of options to configure your video and audio and stream outputs and all that things. And there are a lot of uh, videos on YouTube explaining how to work with those things in OBS. So um, I'm not going to cover all of the details in depth. It's just that I want to provide some kind of overview how I have approached this whole thing, how I have set up my sources and my scenes to give you just some kind of a basic understanding why I'm working the way I'm doing so. And well, that's basically all I want to talk about in this episode. Uh, it's already long enough and it does not have that much interesting content basically it's a lot of talking but um, basically I think it's uh, one of the main things I need to cover cover in this uh, episode so anyway um, I think I have mentioned everything I was going to mention and uh, hopefully I haven't forgot something but in case perhaps you have some questions for example something is still a little bit fuzzy, unclear, not very understandable, then feel free to use the comment section. I'm very looking forward to your comments. And as mentioned, I will have, uh, I will create a question and answer episode where I'm trying to address most of the stuff I have kind of collected over the last, well, episodes and, well, weeks and months. And then um, hopefully you will have a good start using perhaps one of the hardware you may win and uh, the stuff you have in mind already. I'm looking forward to see what uh, you are going to create anyway. So feel free to post uh, links to your channel as well so that I can have a look and then we may have some kind of a, well, gathering, whatever we want to call this anyway. And um, well, as usual, Feel free to subscribe if you haven't done so. I'm really looking forward um, to your support. Uh, it's just some some uh, weeks ago I was able to make it to 1k of sub subscribers on YouTube, and now I'm almost at 1.1k. So it's really it, it keeps growing. I'm really impressed, and uh, I I'm, I'm highly appreciate this. And um, if you want to even further support this project, this channel, then feel free to support me on Patreon or Ko-Fi. I will add the links to the description section. And uh, as usual, thank you very much for watching and see you for the next episode. Bye-bye.